see. We're on the air. There we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the second ever Chatterbooks Book Club live on YouTube. Um, so we started Chatterbooks about a month or two ago. Um, we, in the International League of Thrifters, started talking about books one day and decided it would be fun to start a book club. So we did. And we have got a separate Facebook group now for that called Chatterbooks. And I think the link is in the description below. And the last Sunday of every month, we have a live book discussion with the rotating panel. And these are our panelists for today. I am Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures. This is my friend. Hi, I'm Kelly Jensen. Nice to meet you. And See you. <laughs> and you guys want to introduce yourselves, ladies? I'm Heather. I'm, I'm from Oregon. And the other lady is Glenda. <laughs> are you frozen? Oh, no, Glenda's frozen. Glenda the good. Oh, no. Glenda, if you need to, if you can hear me, you can like exit out, like hang up, and then click on the link to get back in. I don't know what happened. Okay, there she goes. Hopefully, she heard me. So or maybe she's just, you know, really nervous and she just froze. No, she says, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> we were talking behind the scenes, and she did say her internet sometimes gets a bit spotty. So I'm and sure she's she in Canada. She's yes. in Canada. So she should pop back in and just. Oh, wow. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's see. I, I, I have to look at my notes real quick. But hey, in the chat, I see Tanya is there, Thrifty Treasures. Hi, hey, Tanya. Tanya. Yeah. And Diane Dodds and Drifting Life is there. Hello, everybody. Sweet. Oh, Rebecca. Hey, how's it going? And so at the moment, we have six live viewers. You know mm -hmm. all the coolest people. I I'm do. just going to say. <laughs> hey, Nevada. Okay, so um, this month, we read the book, The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery, and that is written by Gabrielle Zevin, who I, you know, I like to, oh, wait, Glenda's coming back in. Let's say hey to, well, let me finish what I'm saying, and we'll say hey to Glenda when she pops back up, um, who I couldn't find a ton about. I like to talk a little bit about the author. But most of the bio that I found about her was just very straightforward. And, you know, she was born in 77 in New York and she went to Harvard. And then she lives in Los Angeles now. Hey, I used to live there, Silver Lake. Did you? In Los Angeles. That's where yes. she lives. Yeah. Oh, we could be neighbors. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I believe she's written about eight books. But other than that, I couldn't find out a whole lot about her. So maybe she's really an old man in a nursing home. <laughs> we were talking about this before because, you know, the book, the the old switcheroo with the author. So anyway, do you, do you know anything about the author? Have you read or heard anything of her? No, I, I, I have never, I've never heard of this author before. So that yeah. doesn't, yeah. Um, am actually, I, oh, go ahead. Am, I, am I chopping up here? No, no. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you, when you had written there that she was a screenwriter, that actually made sense because it reads a lot like a screenplay um, yeah. more than, I mean, it reads like a screenplay in some ways to me. No, I agree. I agree. So it's, yeah. I mean, and when I first saw her picture, I really thought she was a lot younger than what she is. And I thought, well, maybe this was, maybe this is her first novel. I didn't, because I hadn't really heard of any of her other stuff before. So, but no, not true. Not true at all. Okay. So I guess we can jump in. Let me make sure. Sometimes I jump ahead. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is Kelly, by the way. Okay. So, um, in the book, The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery, there will be spoilers if you're watching and you haven't read the book. Um, A.J. owns a bookstore on an island, and his prized possession, Tamerlane, is stolen. And then in the interim, when they're looking for it, and he's, you know, thinking about ending himself, basically. Yeah, he's not having a good year. Yeah, a baby is left in his shop. Anyway, so. An actual baby in a carriage. Baby. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. Not as a carriage. But as I was reading it, I was like, is that like a baby baby? It's a real baby. Baby. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I was, as we were reading it, my questions are a bit out of order probably, but who would you say was your favorite character in the book? Uh oh, I liked the little girl. I liked the baby. Yeah. She was just, I loved her reality. Right. I liked who she was and who she became and, and, and how she behaved and her choices. And, and I like her effect on everyone around her. You yeah. know, like a kid does. Yeah. But to have it not be your kid and to watch the progression of how he changed versus who he was in the beginning. He had yeah. The old toot. And so I liked her. Like yeah. She was like this little godsend. How about you? Isn't that how it usually happens with babies is, is yeah. they change us. They, they make us different people. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. How about you? Well, 
How many do you have children? Do you have children? You I have got children. three babies. I got a five year old Benny at Benji. Sorry, he's my five year old says he wants to be Ben now, and only I can call him Benji, so I'm sorry, Ben. Ben is <laughs> uh, Chessa is nine, and Jack is now 11. How about you? What you got? Um, I have four children. I'm older than both of you ladies by way more by bit, actually. Four children. Um, yeah. And so I have, I have a daughter and three sons and they are all grown. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> they made it. You'll all make it. Person, all doing well. Yeah, nice. yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> They're all out of prison. <laughs> they didn't get there. They never got arrested. So you're good. That's yeah. Like my mom said it. Yeah. I figured, yeah, they made it without doing that. It's all good. Yeah. Done. Mission accomplished. So mission who accomplished. Who would you say so was I, your favorite character? I actually, I liked AJ. Um, he changed and I really enjoyed watching him go from sort of this, my youngest son actually reminds me of AJ. He's very um, intellectual. He reads a lot. He, if, if I could see a profession for him and he's only in his early twenties, that it would be that he would own a bookstore or something along those lines, be a librarian, something like that. But AJ reminds me of my Ethan that way because he, he, I could see where having somebody that you actually had to take care of yourself, you know, come outside of yourself would um, cause you to change and grow. And I just yeah. really liked his character. Yeah, he seemed really authentic and um, more than, more than one dimensional, which I found some of the other characters just kind of flat. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 He likes the book evolved. Like in the mm. beginning of the book, when I first started, yeah. and I thought he was the, an old codger who owned a, owned a bookstore. And then when they start talking about his wife had been, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Um, then I realized he's in his 40s. And I was like, what? So I had to like reprocess the whole, I'm yeah. like, okay, wait. And then when things happen, like you think mm. it's going to happen because you've read so many books, and then something's uh -huh. happened happen and you're like okay now you're re-enrolled because what you thought was going to happen didn't happen at, like anyway yeah no that's right yeah <laughs> and honestly I didn't now that I'm thinking about the question of who was my favorite character because I didn't really think about the questions before I wanted it to be fresh spontaneous. and spontaneous and I, you know, I'm like I don't know because originally I would have said the sister Ismay I liked mm -hmm. her a lot in the beginning mm -hmm. she was like me kind of like scatterbrained and like theater and then when I got to know her more in the book I didn't like her as much yeah she like went the other way yeah like you think you start this book with a whole list of ideals yeah and at the end of the book you're like oh I totally didn't see that coming. yeah and some of the like choices that. that she made I would never have made because mm -hmm. I can't keep my mouth shut you know if my yeah, if I thought no. my husband was running around on me yeah that that was yeah. no I would no there was <laughs> conversation yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like honey what exactly. the yeah yeah right right I'm looking in the chat and I'm seeing that uh, Drifting Life says that she liked Lambiase best. She thought it was sweet how their friendship evolved. That's true with AJ I Lambiase. Love that. Yes. You know what it reminded me of? Um, Lambiase and, and uh, AJ's friendship reminded me of. If you read the. Um, my brain just went zap. Reminded me of you guys in Footloose. I'm just saying. No, it did it. Not yeah. me. Now you're throwing me away here again. I'm like, no, oh gosh, oh gosh. What's the name of the book? <gasps> There's even a TV show. I'll have to remember it. It's a cop. And then his best friend is the Native American guy. And um, oh my gosh, I can't remember what it's called. I'm trying uh, to think. I, it'll come back to me. But, I mean, the, the name Lone of the first. No, no, the name of the first book is called uh, A Cold Dish. Um, and I can't think of. Anyway, it'll come back to me. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, that, that, that reminded me of that. Oh, I can't believe I can't remember it. Lawn Meyer. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> there is oh, Remind me of the, two, the cop and the... That was your guardian book angel. Yes, right my husband's in the other room. It, it reminded me of their friendship, you know, just sort of like somebody's, like, Lambiase was like the level-headed, like giving him good advice and, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, out in the world, not so locked in. Yes, yes. Check out. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so other than that, I mean, we... And it, Kelly and I were talking before, and this is normally one of the last questions that I ask is like, how would you rate the book on a level, you know, one to 10? I was not a big fan. See, now, and I really liked it. I was at a retreat this weekend and recommended it to the nine women who were with me. Yeah. I really enjoyed the book. 
this book club book, you know, you can go either way where you get something really esoteric that you would never have read on your own or you see on the bookshelf and go, uh -uh. but you have to read it because you want to look cool with all your friends who read the book and you just kind of, it's a snoozer and you can't get through it. I really enjoyed this one. And I think because I had expectations and then they weren't what I thought. So it kept me going. Like you would, something I, would happen that I didn't expect and I would now want to go to the next chapter and read to the next right. chapter. It's like I cared. That's good. I wanted to see what happened with that little baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you, Heather? Did you, did you? Oh, like that's really interesting. Did I like, I, I didn't like it, which is, I know that sounds terrible. I, I, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. A lot of, um, I come from, I come from a background of having, um, law enforcement folks in my and so it wasn't realistic to me and, and I guess that's the way that I think I tend to think more realistically and I also was a protective services worker and I know that that wouldn't have happened <laughs> so I just had sort of you know I had my own biased sort of you know what I mean sort of a view on it but I did enjoy I enjoyed the characters I really did and it was so yeah. There were things that there were things I liked about the book that had nothing to do with the book. I liked the yeah questions that came up. Like so, a lot of the questions that I pulled from the book to ask in the, like today are questions that came up from the book or things I posted in chatter books. Like you know, if you, well, I can't even remember now. I have to look. <laughs> but but those type of questions it had nothing to do with the actual story of the book. But you know, if you could have a restaurant based on a book, what well, restaurant? You know, what I mean, like. Wow, that's kind of a neat idea, you know. Yeah. And just some of, the little, some of the things that were peppered in the book, I liked. So I, I'm looking in the chat. Let's see. See, I agree with Nevada. I didn't expect to like it. I was going to read it because I like you. Oh, and so <laughs> I'm enjoying this book. Woo! So, and I think, I, I think for me with this book, because I didn't want to like it, but I wanted you to like me for liking it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I went in thinking I need to find something to like because I just I'm in another book club and I hated the last book and I was doing an audiobook and I couldn't get through it I'm like oh I'm schlepping through an audiobook are you kidding me and it was horrible so I thought well, what was it uh, I oh gosh um phenomenon something phenomenon it was about the Croatian war oh oh and it goes back and forth in time, and everyone has these really foreign names, which I was really struggling to. I mean, it's hard for me to remember your name, and it's written right there. And, you know, see, like, Thrifty Books, she, Thrifty Life, she like my, she like it, too. Yes. She my people. She my people. Oh, yeah, Glenda, <laughs> you made it back in. Hi, Glenda. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Got a different computer. Let, I'm so glad. I was going to uh, let oh, go ahead. introduce yourself, and then I'll, I'll ask some of the questions of you. And then we'll move on. We'll move forward. So tell them who you are, where you are, and everything. Oh, did you freeze? I'm Glenda. I live in Canada, uh, in Ontario, 100 miles north of Toronto, right straight up. Um, I sell online, and uh, during the day, I do books for other people. So I'm self employed, 100%. Nice. And, and uh, that, that's it. Plain and simple. So some of the questions we, we asked already, what, one was, who was your favorite character in the book? AJ. He, he reminds me of my mom so much. My mom was always uh, uh, miserable. <laughs> and as you know, she, she, was, she was quite funny. Mm -hmm. uh, I, he, just, he reminded me of my mom so much. Miserable. Wow, that reminded me of your son. <laughs> make her happy. Mom. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And then we asked also, oh, we jumped ahead and asked, basically, do you like the book? Because I, I like to ask, what would you rate it, like, on a scale of 1 to 10? Um, and I did not enjoy it that much. There were things I liked, but then overall, no. How about you? I really enjoyed the book until the very end. I didn't like how the how the ending was. Yeah. Um, spent a little too much time on uh, when the girl was growing up. Um, Maya, Maya. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I liked it. I liked how it kept me in suspense of who took the book. Yes. Oh yeah. Because I, I, 
because I always wondered why they, when the book was stolen, they never interviewed uh, his wife, his new wife. Oh. Because she was around. You had been there that day. I never. So, a jerk. Yeah, she was there. Hmm. Interesting. And honestly, I just forgot about it. I just thought that it yeah, would come up again. Like it was just one more thing for him to be unhappy about. Yeah. 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 I thought they were going to. I, I thought when they moved or when, you know, later on in life, like somewhere in the, when there was no break in, no nothing, I thought, well, he must have just been drunk and lost it or he put it somewhere or he, something. Right. And then they never found it. So I just let it go. Oh, well, the book's yeah, gone. But it, I didn't expect it to end Yeah. It was funny how it, it turned yeah. around and when it came back to him, how it came back to him. Yes. Thirteen Life is saying she was seriously crying at the end when he was trying to talk to Maya. My kids were making fun of me. My daughter had to read a couple of pages to me. Oh, you're my people. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you guys listen to the book or did you um did you read read it? Page Turner. I, I read, read it. You read it. Yeah, I actually. I read, I read it too. I read it on the yeah. I'm an audio book. Right? Audio. I, yeah. I did the audio book as well. And the guy, I mean, I'm guessing it's the same guy that did yours. Mm -hmm. um, and his voice was so bored. It and at the beginning, I was just like, because yeah. I mean, the, the actor got into the whole like, so, I'm so bored voice. It's almost like he evolved and, with the characters. <laughs> and it did get yeah. better. But at first, I was like, oh, oh no. Yeah. I don't know if I can do this. Did, did anyone do you know who the name, who it was, who the reader was, or yeah. the narrator? Do you happen to know? Because I'm, I'm an audiobook person myself, and, and I might have enjoyed it more had I, the, you know, not checked one out from the library. I'm looking on my phone right now. I, oh. I like audiobooks because if I pick up an actual book, it's like a signal for my kids to need something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I'm getting on a phone, but I get that little bud in my ear, and, they, and I'm there over here, and I'm listening to a book, and they don't know. <laughs> it's invisible. It's the same way with my husband. I, I have my... Yes, that's a little one pod right there. You're good. So it was narrated by Scott Brick. And at first I say, I would have said, oh my gosh, this is horrible. But I'm not it's gonna get true. He, he evolved with AJ throughout the book. So it, it turned out to be. And so I'm looking in the chat. A lot of people read it. Diane listened to it. Um, Re Rebecca read it. Okay, good, good. So, all right. My, one of the questions that I liked from the book was... They went to eat at the Moby Dick themed restaurant, <laughs> and I, I like that idea. And so I was going to ask everybody, and you guys in the chat too, let us know: in what restaurant, based on a book, would you like to dine? And I, again, I haven't thought this through. So, <laughs> well, I like Hogwarts. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I totally got inspired. Oh yeah, <laughs> some Harry Potter <laughs> pictures over here. That's a good one. That so a Harry a Potter restaurant. themed yeah. restaurant. That'd be fun. Oh man, I may have to steal that. How about you guys? Um, my the first thing that came to mind for me was chocolate. Oh, oh yes. yes, that sounds good. On I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, okay, I'm still thinking. How about you, Glenda? Me too. Me too. I'm still thinking. How about uh, in the chat? I'm looking in the chat. Nobody's saying yet. What was I thinking? Um. Like in okay, in Little Women, the the food was not great, but they always made me hungry. Is that weird? Maybe because we were always hungry. <laughs> you know, they didn't have McDonald's. That's what happened. I mean, I love the Harry Potter idea. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. Maybe because I like Little Women so much. <laughs> that's a that's a classic book I've not read. Really? I've seen the movie? <gasps> seen the seen Okay. Movie. Seen I need it. to read some classics. Is what I need. Yeah. To do. I've never read nothing. I have nothing. I saw a question earlier somewhere. I was like, what classic books have you not read? I'm like, oh, sorry. I jumped in. Your head. No, it's okay. <laughs> None of them. Not, None, not one. None. Really? None. Okay. We'll not get on one. with that. Yeah, no. So, Glenda, what do you think? What, what restaurant would you think you would want to eat in based on a book? The Hobbit. That would be too good. I don't know. That might be some raw rabbit or something. Oh, um, some, I don't know. We actually have I'm, a. I'm a. Here. We actually have a habit hole. That's actually a really good little place. No, yeah. no raw rabbit. Yeah. Oh, Cindy says. I, I actually don't know. 
Ooh, a Titanic, Titanic themed themed restaurant. Yeah. Ooh, that would be cool. Ooh. I totally forgot about that. And actually, Tanya and I went yeah, to the cafe not long ago. <laughs> and like the the menu is like. I would like to eat. Do what? I know. I have them here. You take a cruise, uh, you know, on the lake and eat on a ship. Oh, that'd be cool. Fine, you know, dinner. Yes. Yeah. That's. That would be good. I would like that too. Okay. Oh, I don't like fish. So. <laughs> <laughs> I would think a boat on a lake would have seafood too. That does Possibly. seem kind of theme friendly. <laughs> but it would be cool. Yeah, I'll have fish. <laughs> you know what I want to read? I want to read some Faulkner. You read any Faulkner? I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> it's, on my, it's on my list of things people have heard of that I want to read. Okay. In the chat, if you come up with any other what you would eat, where, what restaurant, let, let us know and we'll, we'll come back to you. Okay. So here we go. This is a funny one. When, and the, I'm going totally out of order, but when in the book did you realize or did you start to think that Leon Friedman might not be Leon Friedman? Almost immediately. I was like, mm -hmm. right. He's not no, when are you going to sign the book? Yeah, he was like, oh, yeah, his answers were so vague. And I'm like, that man ain't that man. <laughs> How about you, Heather? Yeah, same here, right at the beginning when he said um, that he didn't, you know, where he said that he didn't look like um, he was supposed to have looked like. He, he looked, you know, his nose was too small and da-da-da-da-da, you know, that. <laughs> that yeah, it's like, huh. Yeah. Now, you don't post, mm -hmm. you don't print the picture of yourself looking 20 years older. That's not the one you Right. Picked. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that was when. That that part I did find kind of funny that AJ didn't mm -hmm. peg him at all, especially when he was saying he, he played the Macy's Santa and AJ was like, how's that? How do you manage that? And you're Jewish. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's still to be quick for him. Yeah. AJ wasn't the sharpest tool as far as yeah. the people. I think he had no social skills after, I think, after his wife. Agree. Um, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Too much into himself. Yeah. yeah. I think he just disappeared into his bookstore. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. He just really didn't care. <laughs> he was like, okay, well, you're here. Uh, whatever. Moving on. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> it didn't, I mean, it talked a little bit about AJ's family, but I did like, I mean, when Tamerlane was lost and the baby, when Maya came into his life, I did like that. Um, idea of like shifting value, what you find valuable, because that Tamerlane was like everything, you know, that was his future, he thought, you know, and then the baby came, and then suddenly it was almost as if um, you find your family, you know, you make your family refine them, kind yeah, of deal. Yeah, exactly. You know, like everything so. you think is goes away when you have a cello, when you have a child. Wait, when you have a cello? When you have a cello <laughs> child. <laughs> I know that doesn't come out as a question, but... I guess, you know, coffee talk, discuss. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, see, I think it would have been, uh, that's, that's when I, when I say that I didn't like the book, it's not that I didn't like the premise, but it, I would love to see it as a play. I would love, I would pay money to go see it as a play. And, and I, that's where I, I struggled with, with the uh, prose, I guess. Mm. That's, that's just me. Once I realized the relationship with the sister-in-law and the baby with Maya, I was like, oh, that is not how I would have handled that. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Like, it's my baby. Like, yeah. I, I would not have sat on that waiting for my lying, cheating husband to do the right thing. And she was trying like, to have a baby all these, you know, yeah. this time. Now that, right. I'm trying to get, but I, I don't know that I could have controlled my hormones enough to go, well, you know what? That baby actually technically is my husband's baby, so I'm going to have that baby with me and Nothing. Like I don't know that I could have just sat back and let my husband screw that up. So yeah, like not. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But he got his comeuppance, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he was a strange bird. He was a strange. Bird. You know, you know. If I think if you have that many miscarriages or whatever, maybe you know, maybe you just yeah, maybe. get a lot going on. Yeah. yeah, I guess. I just I don't know. Okay. Any. So here's another one. It, I, I, again, like I didn't care for the book that much, but I like the ideas that it made me think about. Mm -hmm. Is that weird to say? <laughs> no, um, so I like the idea of encountering, encountering stories at the right time in your life. And do you have a story, you know, do any of you guys have a story of like a book that 
was encountered at the right or wrong time. Yeah, I just finished, um, before I read this one, I read What Alice Forgot. Oh, I haven't read that. Oh, changes your, change your world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really good, and it's, I thought it was related to um, Still Alice, mm -hmm. totally different Alice's, nothing to do with the other, nothing. But it was about this woman who basically gets amnesia and forgets ten, the last 10 years of her life. And in real life, in her current life, she's going through a divorce. She doesn't understand. She has, she has three children. But then she whacks her head or something, and then she loses 10 years. So she goes back in time 10 years where she mm. still, still thinks she's pregnant. She's madly in love with her husband. She can't imagine why people are telling her they're going through a divorce. She's like, why would we do that? I love him so much. And it's like, and you see how her reality of what she thought 10 years ago struggles with who she grew into. Yeah. And like which parts of herself as she – does or doesn't come out of it, spoiler alert, um, you know, does she or doesn't she ever get it all back, but what part of her youth does she want to remember, and what part does she remember, and so it's like, oh, it's like, am I treating my husband the way I should, or is it me, is it him, is it us, is it just reality, it's like, where were these feelings, and where did they go, right, right, and like, right, how can it go so terribly wrong in 10 years, and then to realize over some of the book that it, maybe it's you, no way, not, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but, so it made me look at like my relationship with my ex-husband and what maybe I could have done differently. Not that I would go back now because we have children and I'm happy, but it's like, wow, I could, that could like that, that book at this time in my life was so perfect to just yeah. go, okay, what about the next 10? You yeah. know, am I going to make decisions that in 10 years I won't go? Yeah. I didn't say that. I'll have to look into that one. Maybe. What? Uh, yeah, me too. Forgot. That sounds really good. I almost yeah. forgot. Maybe yes. I'll put that on the list for possible upcoming book club books. Totally good. How about you guys? Any book that you read that was at the right time or the wrong time? I'm not really a book reader, but that's why I joined this, so I can get into reading books. I'm not really a big yeah. book reader. Good. Well, I'm glad. We'll walk you Yeah. Yeah. That's her. her name is Glenda. Oh, no, she's... I'm gonna oh, watch AJ. Her. Oh, okay. Like AJ. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> you don't I get, get my jokes. I'm I get that. it. It's okay. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> How are you, Heather? Well, oddly enough, this one, um, not necessarily because of the entire storyline, but um, I have just lost my father about two weeks ago. And I was doing um, hospice. I was doing hospice care with him. And so... <laughs> I could barely get through the end oh, of the book. It was really hard, Ooh. but just, uh, it was odd. It was, I was like, oh my word, you know, this is, this is, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know. It was, it was very touching. It was very moving oh, for me. I'm so sorry, by the way. So, oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was 84 and he had a good life, but you know. Still, it's still daddy. Yeah. It's still daddy, right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's, this is kind of um, serendipitous. Yeah. You know, it kind of made me, it's made me think a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Cindy in the chat says, sorry for your loss, Heather. Oh, thanks. I, I didn't, wasn't going to bring it up, but it's like, wow, yeah. that it really yeah. is. It fits. You never I mean, know what you're going to get in a, pro, in a live broadcast. Yeah. So, yeah. No. Um, and my about the book, Cindy Villarreal uh, says a lot of, uh, she reads a lot of self-help spiritual books, so she's always finding something that speaks to me in the moment. Mm -hmm. And mine is actually yeah. similar. I, I, again, I didn't think much about the questions beforehand. Um, and when I read that, I was like, you know what? I don't read a whole lot of spiritual self-help books, but there was a time in my life, which I've talked about briefly sometimes, um, when I was going through a lot of panic attacks. And it was really, uh, because I didn't believe in panic attacks before that. Um, funny how that works. It was really... <laughs> thing for me to, to swallow and so my mom and I had gone, gone up to East Texas which is in the middle of I mean Baptist country you're in the Bible Belt yeah and we were staying in this little bed and breakfast and it happens to have this like wooden you know big library room which I was in heaven of course and I found a book in there by Thich Nhat Hanh called Pieces Every Step which where in the world like you're in the middle of the Bible Belt you find this Buddhist book by Thich Nhat Hanh called Pieces Every Step. And I devoured that book. And, you know, I didn't want to take it from their library, but I went and got a copy of it. I didn't. I didn't. Um, and it was, I mean, and, and then I had never really, I mean, I liked the Dalai Lama and I read some of his stuff in the past, but I never really considered, you know, looking at 
Buddhism, you know? And so it was a huge, I mean, yeah, like of a weekend. Yeah. It's, but it really helped me process what I was going through, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was a surprise. Like you, and I think you just had that book show up when it needed to. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. that's what this is. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> and in the chat, if you guys have a book that came up, you know, that was a good, I forgot the question. Or bad, maybe it yeah. struck the wrong nerve and devastated you. Right, exactly, that showed up at the right time, encountering stories. Okay, um, so another thing that came up in the book, Maya, when she was growing up, um, wondered about herself being left in a bookstore and how that, and she thought that that's just the way it was. And then other children, that's, they were just left in different shops, you know? <laughs> and so what if your life had been determined by what store you were left in? I thought about that. I thought, I wonder what kind of store. Yeah. Maybe I'd like to have been raised in a health food store because then maybe I'd eat better. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Yeah. I, I like that one. Yeah, that actually would probably be. Yeah. They still and end up exactly where I'm at. So. How about you guys? I can only see myself being left in a bookstore yeah. <laughs> um, because I'm such a reader. I, you know, I, I'm pretty voracious. Yeah. How about yeah. you? Um, yeah. I say a jewelry store. All right. Because uh, I remember uh, when I first, my first job, yeah, we uh, we went out to lunch and we were downtown Toronto and all the fancy stores, and all my coworkers would say every time we saw a jewelry store, there was Glenda looking at the watches. Oh, Always, I, that's the first thing I go to is watches. Oh, every time I'm in a jewelry store, for some oh. reason, I'm, I'm it fascinates me. Maybe you're Swiss. So, yeah, I was. What's that? Maybe you're Swiss, like in your heritage. Or something. <laughs> your past. <No. laughs> No, I, I'm attracted to diamonds. Uh, diamonds and I just like jewelry. I like the gold. I like beads and stuff like that. I've always ha- been like that. Yeah. Sparklings. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Nevada says left in a thrift store. <laughs> yeah. Although I can't afford it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd say a, di- uh, a jewelry store for me. Right. And I basically was, I, my mom was a librarian, so wow. I was basically. And you didn't like this book? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I, I was, you know, basically raised in a library because she would have to work some nights and we would be up there and I don't know. Stick, to, stick around. Yeah, we were in the library a lot. So, yeah. I, I'm going to go back to the chat a little bit. Some people were sharing some of the stories that uh, came at their right or wrong times in their lives. Um, Cindy says she just finished, I may say this wrong, Shakti Gawain, Gawain, Gawain. And she's amazing. She written in the 80s, she thinks. Uh, Nevada says mm-hmm. Civil War Land in Bad Decline by George Saunders. It made her laugh during an intense time in her life and gave her perspective. So that was awesome. That doesn't sound like the title of a book that would make you laugh. Right, right. Civil War mm-hmm. Land in Bad Decline. That's something cool. Okay. Look awesome. that up. Okay, if I'm if I miss something or if I go too fast, y'all tell me. Or if you have something you want to say, because I just keep going and just jump right in. Are we good? Okay, so here's the question. I brought, I, I asked this one in the group. What classic book have you never read? She says all of them. Not a one. <laughs> Nothing. I've seen Portrait of Dorian Gray. That's a good. You question. have. That's the one book that I'm. I have never read. I'm, I've good. been. I've been to Oscar Wilde's grave, but I have never read. It's like sacrilegious, you know. right? Like, you're just supposed to read. It. <laughs> There's something really wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I never read one. I've never read Moby Dick. I started it. That's hard. No, no I didn't. Hard read. And then Catcher in the Rye is the one that people always fuss at me about that I've never read Catcher in the Rye. Never. Everyone's just supposed oh. to read. Catcher in the Rye. Never read Catcher in the Rye. I can't yeah. read that. How about you, Glenda? Oh, I have not read a lot of books. Uh, well, no. Uh, <laughs> I have no. read more than her. What? That's something. That's like a big deal. <laughs> yeah, there's, I, yeah. There, I'm sure there's more that I haven't read, but those are the two. And in the chat, let's see, Nevada. Okay, she says, I went to H.P. Lovecraft's grave this summer, and now I'm reading all his stories. Ooh, oh, you're channeling him. Oh. Yeah. 
Well, in another book club that I, I am in, we are sort of dissolving. I don't know. We got to get it back together. We read The Paris Wife, and then that just spurred us to start reading all of Fitzgerald and Hemingway, and they got Hemingway. mad. Hemingway. I want to read Hemingway. Yeah, no. <laughs> We start. I started reading. I, I said we should read the bullfighting one. Oh, what's it called? I can't remember. And we started I read it. Ferdinand. That's different. <laughs> they they were like, Margaret, are you sure? I don't know if I can get through this one. Okay. All right. And then I also asked in the group, who is your favorite poet? My son. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He wrote a poem on silver. It's crazy town good. Yeah. It's weird. Cool. How about you guys? Uh, my favorite is Sylvia Plath, but um, I, I actually wrote that the other day. But there's so there's so many. I I loved um, I I loved Dor Dorothy Parker. Yeah. Um, a lot of the classics. Um, Edna St. Vincent Millay, Langston Hughes. Yeah, yeah. But definitely Sylvia Plath was my favorite. She's dark. And yeah. I, I don't know. I just loved her work. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Glenda? No, not I. I couldn't even remember a poem. Oh no! You know, but that's <laughs> similar. Once was a man from Nantucket. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what? I'm a Dorothy Parker lover, and mm -hmm. Longfellow. The Lady of Shalott, though, is one of my favorite. That's Tennyson. That's one of my favorite poems of all times. I just love it. So recited mm -hmm. for us. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was joking. Like she's like, I could do that right now. <laughs> Right here. Let's throw yeah. down. I won't finish my poem. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Nevada says she likes Sylvia Plath and Edgar Allan Poe also. And Nellie, oh, okay. she's saying she never read Moby Dick either, so I'm not no. alone. Yeah, you're not alone. I didn't read Moby Dick either. <laughs> am I going too fast, you guys? Or am I no. grazing? Like, we're not, do we need to get deeper? I don't know. Well, Are I we think, good? I think we'll get deeper. <laughs> the question goes deeper for somebody. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. That's something. Okay. I may come back to that. Or, no, maybe I won't. We're running out of questions. <laughs> okay. So, um, and, and in the group, I also asked, what was the first chapter book that you read when you, maybe when you were younger, but maybe not, maybe when you were older. First, you know, the first chapter book you read? No? Mine was The Little Princess. My grandmother gave me The Little Princess. A Little Princess? That was the first one I read. What's a chapter book? Thank you. See, I'm like, What's a I, chapter book? <laughs> Just yeah. like the first book that was like without the pictures, you know, like when I was a little girl, the oh, first. I read Black Stallion. Yeah. Farley, but it's not really a chapter. Oh, you mean a book with chapter, not the, yeah. the 40 little books that you can buy. Like, no, no, no. Through or something. It's like a book okay. that has chapters and a lot oh. of, you know, like. I do have an answer to that question. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Black Stallion. <laughs> Black Stallion. There you go. Okay. Continue. So it was the first book that I read that wasn't like a picture book and that oh, had that comic book. Yeah, and it, it didn't have as many pictures yeah. it had different it was all what all the chapters were in one. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Not like you say like mm -hmm. different. Yeah. How about you, Heather? Um my actually, um the first one I read was called Magic Elizabeth. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Um it's it, it that I was probably six or seven. And then, um, and then I got into Nancy Drew. Yeah. Because mysteries have always, Nancy. that's my favorite genre. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Nancy Drew. We have lots of Nancy Drews going on here today. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. And fairy tales. I do like fairy tales. Let's see. Nellie says Nancy Drew or the Bobsy Twins, Bobsy Thrifting Twins. Life, Little House on the Prairie. And Cindy oh, said, fairy tale book, I was very young and had to ask what words meant because I was too little to use a dictionary. Oh, I love that, though. Not like now you can go, what does this mean? Right. Wait for an answer. In the yeah. yeah. So, Sorry. Um, that was something I liked about the last book, too, about, uh, about my brain just left, lucky stuff. There were, there were words in it that I had to look up, and I felt so excited that because I, I hadn't had a book mm -hmm. in a long time. Where I was like, ooh, what does that mean? Ooh, that's a, and there was no context. Yeah. yeah. It was a specific to do with, I can't even remember now. <laughs> but you learned it for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy that when, you, when there's wor there are words that I don't know. It's, it's yeah, it's exciting. Yes. And I, I get excited for my boys, too, because we're listening to... The second Harry Potter now. I don't know if you 
the audio for Harry Potter books are amazing. Jim Dale's fantastic. But they they ask me when he says something they don't know. And I like it. We have to pause the story and I'll answer the questions. I think it drives my husband nuts. He's like, that's just the sort of the story. I'm like, no, he's not. <laughs> he wants to know what gullible means. They want to learn, let them learn. Yeah, like yeah. we're going to find out what gullible means now, you know? So yeah. I like that. I like that too. So, okay, let's see. All right. Did I skip anything? Me too, Margaret. Oh. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we did that one. Okay, and is there a book that you go to over and over again? Cause you were saying you might read this one again. I might, yeah, cause I really, cause I, I kept thinking I knew what was coming mm -hmm. and then it wasn't. Like I thought that AJ was old and then he wasn't. And mm -hmm. I thought that the kid was not gonna stay there and then she did. And then I thought that he lost Tamerlane, but he didn't. So I'm like, so I may read it again now, but I, I've read one book twice and it's romantic, romancy type of book. Romancy? Um, Night in Shining Armor by somebody. Yeah, and I just, I read it when I was little. It was like one of the first, no, I wasn't. I was in high school. No, I wasn't. I was My sister little. was trying to get me, because Michelle reads all the time. So I read this one, and it was one of those, it was kind of sexy, but like the girl goes back. It's kind of Outlander-ish, but for before. And that was actually really good. And, you know, the girl goes back in time, and she has this knowledge. It's very Outlander-y, come to think of it, actually. So, and I love Outlander. I still haven't read any of this. I love Good for you. You like it. <laughs> and then you should watch it because sexy Scotchman all in the show. <laughs> Just saying. Do not let the children watch. It is um sexy, like mm mm. Just I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. You blush. It's something I say. <laughs> what was the question? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I would read. Um, I I already said that mystery is kind of my genre. I really enjoy them. Probably, um, I would read Colin Dexter's again. They're British, a British series. He did the Inspector Morse. Oh, okay. Mysteries, and I've and I've read those over and over again. And I absolutely love the new series with him as a younger man. Um, yeah. And Louise Penny, I love her books. I actually suggested it for. One, because they're so, um, the, the prose is, it, she just paints beautiful pictures with words. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It takes you to this village that is off the radar, and she talks, I mean, she paints pictures with, that's another place I'd go for food, or, you know, I'd want to, you know. Yes. The <laughs> earlier question. So, um, what was the probably those two. Parker and, Lu and Louise Penny books? Because I, I think I've read one. I'm in another book club at the library, and the ladies always talk about how much they love Louise Penny books. Um, well, her, her main character is um, Armand Gamache. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, they're set, they're set in, um, in, they're set in uh, Mon Montreal. Yes. Canada. Okay. Yeah, they're Canadian. And the, the yeah. one, I, mean, I think it was missing the first one that we read, and I can't remember, because they're out in the woods, and they're in this little town, and it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Now oh, remember, okay, yeah. I can't remember what the first one was called, but the, somebody was shot in the woods? You know oh, I mean? the, um, April, April something. Yeah. April, I can't remember it. Character in the story. Yeah. <laughs> What's April, the, I missed that one. High school student. Oh. I wanted to spank her butt. She needed a whooping. <laughs> um, her mama needed to be paying attention to what that was about. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, so, Nellie, Nellie says she read, we read the Cat Who books each winter. She has a whole set. Thrifting Life would read The Notebook again. Oh, yeah. Rebecca says To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. That's on my list. How about you, Glenda? It's funny. Uh, a couple years ago, I read all the books from The Lord of the Rings, and oh. I don't really like fantasy at all. But I love The Hobbit, and I'd like to read that one again. I really like that book. Um, yeah. That's a good one. And that's in one the book. Go on, go on. And the book that I had was, it was very illustrative, uh, great pictures in it. And I think, I, I just like the format of that one book. And I would like to read that again. Yeah. R Randy and I. I, ever, I was quite surprised. I'm sorry, go ahead. 
I was quite surprised. I really enjoyed those books. Yeah. It's always it not me. Surprise when you I'm expect to not like something and then you do. It's always nice. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's one that, that it's not on this charm bracelet, but my brother got me a book for my charm bracelet and he wanted to know what I would want um, it engraved on it because he wanted to get it engraved. And that was the first book and series that my mom read aloud to us. Like she would pop a big bowl of popcorn and sit and read to us from The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. And so I told him, oh, wow. Yeah, The Hobbit, you know, it's, it's got a secondary title called There and Back Again. And so I said, why don't you put that on the little book, put There and Back Again um, for him. Oh, right, oh so. you're such a romantic. Whatever, that's nice. other gross. <laughs> you know about the things you're passionate oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, but then also, that was something Randy and I started, we started reading aloud to each other at night. That was the second book that we read aloud to each other. Yeah. The first was the Groucho Marx autobiography. <laughs> was it good? Yeah, it was good. Now, see, I like biography. I like reading biography. It was really of good. interesting people. Yeah. Groucho Marx. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the books that I've read, reread, the, when I read Gone with the Wind the first time, it was one of those, the, I read the last line and I like flipped the book over and started over again. There it was go. that good. Yeah. But I, Scarlet was good too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I read, up, yeah, yeah. I read Scarlet too. That one was cool. And yeah. yeah. All that. And, but all of the Anne series I've read multiple times, and then the Harry Potter books I've read multiple times. I haven't read a single Harry Potter book. Yeah. Harry I Potter, yeah. I don't know you. I know, right? I have nothing. But I'd still go to Hogwarts restaurant. Yeah. And then Rebecca, <laughs> I'm going to call Rebecca out in the chat. Rebecca's, hers was To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. And I was talking to her husband, and he was saying, I asked him, like, what's your favorite book? And he said, I, I think it was To Kill a Mockingbird. He says, it would be To Kill a Mockingbird if I'd ever read it. <laughs> I think it should be To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> okay, what books did you think it should be your favorite? What a great book club question. Right. What, what book that you haven't read should be a book that would be your favorite. Right. Mm. What do you think? Oh, God. Answer my own question? <laughs> Outlander? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter? Exactly. Because I think it's something I would enjoy. I just haven't. Maybe we'll do it popcorn. Same here. Yeah. Same here. I have I've not read the Harry Potter books. I mean, I, my my son has, and I would buy them for him. But I just I don't know. I just I thought, oh, it's a kid's book. See no. see what happens when you close your mind. No, That's a good. bad thing. One the thing. audio. I mean, if you have the audio, because Jim Dale is the narrator, and he's won awards. He's amazing. So no, no snoozing. He's not no. And you have my Audible login. You get on there and listen to them. I could, yes. I should give you mine because I got a bunch of crazy crap on there. Okay. All right. Then. Let's see. Thrifting Life says, I want to read the Hunger Games series. That one was really good. That was good. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the few that the book is, is as good or different but good as the movies. Because mm -hmm. usually it's one or the other is great and the other one's crap. Yeah. Well, like Harry Potter, I think. It's I good. hear. It's good. I like the, the, what about the Vampire the, Girl. The what? Girl with a dragon. The tongue? vampire one. Oh, Twilight. No? Yes. Ah, ha, we're on the same page, Glenda. We like the same kind of things. <laughs> that I like to read. Yeah, I've read all of those. I like. I know it's one of those that people tease you about, but I enjoy it's a them. Good read. Yeah, I, enjoy them. I think people who are young at heart like those, and they're fast read, and you and you care quickly. Yeah, overall, I yeah. liked them. Yeah. My, my stepdaughter was reading them back before it was no longer cool to mm -hmm. read them. And so I wanted to read them because then she and I could have something. And I'm like, oh, these are really good. <gasps> totally team up with them. Yeah. yeah. Although, okay, you guys, don't tell anybody, but two years ago, we were up on the penin peninsula, the Olympic Peninsula, and I actually got out of the car and made my, or out of the motorhome and had my husband take a picture of me by the red truck. And forks. Really? So don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Did you read them, Heather? Yeah. Yeah. Must have if she goes with the well, truck. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's a, you need to show us that picture. I want to see that on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say what it is. Just see if anyone knows. That's right. Now, as far as the the book and the movie going, there's the Divergent series that I really like. The books of the Divergent series, but I still haven't finished watching the movies because I just couldn't get into the movies at all. No, no. But the books were really good. I don't like the movies. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then if we were going to, oh, we're pushing the time limit here. So if we were going to cast this movie. Who, Anne Hathaway. For who? The, 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 I have no Amelia? No, no. The, this is yeah, the, no, no, no. Amelia. Yes. Amelia, the girl? Yes. Anne Hathaway. Okay. Who That's would you guys cast for Amelia? Um, mm. oh, I can't think of her name. Oh. She played Julia. Um, oh. Ah, where's her name? Um, she played in, in uh, Julia and Julia. Do you remember that? Did you see oh. that movie? Yeah, about, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she'd be cute. Is, you know who I'm talking about. I can't think of her name. Yeah, she's in all the cute shows. I know. Oh, Amy. 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 Amy somebody. Yes. Amy somebody. <laughs> Amy somebody famous. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of who it is either. My sister is probably watching and watch this later and go, dummy, dummy. It's Amy. <laughs> yeah, girl. Yeah. It's, can you read it? It's on my tongue. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the chick from Notebook would be good too. <laughs> yeah. The chick from Notebook would be good. How about AJ? I don't, I mean, I know AJ's, He's Indian, right? Or half part? I missed that. Yeah, God, I missed that. Is he? No, no, he is. Yep. Yeah, is he? Because remember, the guy comes into the store and says, "You got you're black, and she's black, but you're different kinds of black." And he's like, "Very That's offensive. That's another thing. I totally thought that yeah. he was Sean Connery. The first part of the book was in my head. I like to put a character with it. Right. And I was thinking AJ was this grouchy old man, grouchy old widower at a bookstore. That, oh, it's Sean Connery. And then yeah. it turns out he's forty. So I'm like, oh no, it's Brad Pitt. It's like, phew. okay, Indian oh, Brad Pitt. Redo. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they said the, the different kinds of black, I was like, it's not Brad Pitt either. I got this all wrong. Yeah. Who would it be? Hmm. Amy Smart. I thought it Amy Smart. Rachel McAdams. Cool. Yeah. That's what her. they're saying. She'd be good. What about Maya? Oh, wait, they didn't answer for AJ yet. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of, because of, um, he always plays a bit part in his movies as M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, the director. Just yeah. because he's Indian, but that, yeah. you know, he's but there's also not Indian. a lot of really prominent Indian actors that we probably know. There's probably no, exactly, unless you're into Bollywood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some, but I know a couple comedians. Maybe like they would the do gym. well doing the Bollywood at the gym. Oh, it's gonna rain. You have thunder here. Sorry. God just went. You only know one Indian actor. Singing. How about you, Glenda? What do you think for AJ? I'm thinking. Oh, okay. I'm well, thinking. We can come back to it. It would be good. Oh, Tanya says Lou Diamond Phillips. Ooh. Yes. I can yeah. Really yeah. See that. And you know what? He was. Right. He'd be about the right age. Too. Yeah. And he is in the Longmire series, which is the one I was comparing, like, the friendships <laughs> between the two. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Possibly. Yeah, that's a good pick. Hmm. Lou Diamond Phillips is good. Or Adam good. Beach. Do you, know, do you know who Adam Beach is? He's a Native American actor. He was in Smoke Signals and... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yes. You know, in the movie version, they could change it to him being Native American. They do that That's all the time. They change things like that all the time. That's true. That's know. true. That's so <laughs> true. Yes. We, we can take liberties as well, I guess. We can make up whatever we want. Right. Yes. How, how about Maya? I don't... Maya. Gosh. That's, this is a hard one. Yeah, I could, I could not place her. Could not place her at all. Um, Maybe a new, new young actress. At, at, at the, well, I can't think of her name, but she's the girl that was in Beast of a Southern, Southern Beast Lit. Beast of a Southern Crap. She was nominated for an Oscar, and she's like a baby and never acted in anything. Or so. Anyway. Oh. Beast of the Native Wild Beast the Wildness, Louisiana thing. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, I, know who you're I know who you're talking about. Oh. Yeah, that girl. Yes. Somebody Google it and tell me that I'm not insane. Technically. No. <laughs> what do you think? This is a hard one. Maybe this is a hard yeah. one to cast. This will be a Let us one. know. Let us know in the chat. Or the movie. Yeah. Or let us know later. If you watch this later, let us know in the comments what you would think. What you think. Okay. Do you guys have any more you want to talk about about the book or anything that you'd like to bring up before we close it out this went by fast questions from the audience right 
Um, I, you know, I, I may go back and get it on audiobook because I listen so I, that's primarily how I read because I drive a lot. So, you know, I just, I, I, I really wanted to like it. And, um, and I, you know, you, you asked for a number and I'd probably give it a six. Um, yeah. and like I said earlier, I really would, I, 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 I'd pay to see it in a play. Um, but right. yeah, I'll probably go back and listen to it yeah. on audio. Really would. Yeah. What number would you give it? I'll give it like a nine. Hmm. Okay, I'll give it an eight because now that I've read what Alice forgot, that would get a ten. So it kind of changes your scale. Right, like after having kids and they say, "What's your pain on a scale of one to ten? After kids, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> it's really not that pain now. I had a kid. <laughs> exactly. That's where to compare. Yeah, it's like well, before or after children pain. What are we talking? Yeah. Let's see, Nevada says that she has to mention Puddle Glum the cat. She loved that name. That's true. There were some good details. How about you, Glenda? What would you give it? What's, what number would you give it? I would give it a seven. Uh, one, I didn't like the ending, and I just didn't like how they spent a lot of time on Maya when she was a little girl. Right. I, I, the book spent a little too much time there. I think, yeah, if she but had I did like how they, faster, I think the book would have had a more juicy ending, more meatier. Yeah, but I did like how it switched from uh, him, then to Maya, then to uh, the sister-in-law, and then back to him, you know, and, and how the, I liked how it kept the suspense about where this book was, and like it was like a full circle. Yeah, I and think the that book that's and that's back to him. Well. Yeah, and where she came from and who left her. And then that, that little piece of a story about where the mom of the baby, or Maya's mom, her little piece of story to me was fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. I, would, I would give it, I, don't, I go back and forth because I didn't like it that much. So I would say a four or five, but then there were so many concepts in the book that I liked. Mm -hmm. So maybe a five. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me, oh, Nevada says she's giving it an eight. Oh, no. What? What? So my comment earlier about April Peck, the little tart, was in a different book. I was like, I don't know. We'll just roll with it. I was like, oh, wait, there's a whole other story. Sorry. <clears throat> Scratch her. There was no little tart in this book. There's no little 18-year-old tramp who needs spanking. I, I'm used to it. <laughs> 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 it's like, it's a while. Wait a minute. Where are Adams. We? Amy Adams. That's Amy Adams. Adams. Yeah. Now you can sleep easy. Let's see, Nevada gives it an eight. Thrifting Life, an eight. She's glad, but she wouldn't read it again. She's glad she read it. Cindy Villarreal gave it a four. Diane agreed a five. Okay, awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this this, this month. Um, next month, we are reading the book Everything's Relative by Jenna McCarthy. The link, if you're interested in getting it on Amazon or on Kindle, is down in the comment section below. It is an affiliate link, and so it gives me like, 13 cents or something like that if you buy it from <laughs> the from the link so anyway i'm excited about next month because jenna mccarthy the author is has agreed to come on and talk about her book with us so cool. that's cool. Last sunday of the month. last yeah. sunday of the month that's right put that in there but awesome. i learned after we, we chose the book it's not on audible <laughs> yeah it's not on audible. <laughs> so i'm going to be going to my public library and getting the book and then we'll go from there. But if I get a page turn, okay. the kids are going to see. I know. I know. All anyway, right. so this is very exciting. All right. Thank you so much for coming on, everybody. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.